Good afternoon. Uh, happy Sunday, everybody. Sam Record here, which, you know, as always, you pretty much know that if you're here. We're going to be doing the live reading of Chapter 13. Um, if you would, be sure to like my page. Uh, flip on over to my YouTube channel, which all these videos get uploaded there, too, so you can listen to them while you're doing dishes or something else if you don't have the time to read the book but have a little bit of time to listen. So, Anyway, we'll get into this and then be on our way. Uh, chapter 13 through the looking glass the stench of decay and dirt filled the room leaving a sense of dread to linger in the forgotten crypt the ancient stones surrounding uh, surrounding them were covered in dark green moss clinging to the crumbling mortar like ivy flowing through the grooves several memorial plots lined the side walls wound, uh, worn smooth in time and col colored white from age the patchy gray stones between them uh, between the hanging moss made dark made the dark chamber feel constricting and isolated. A single arched tunnel filled the stair uh, filled with stairs angled upward from the center of the far wall, disappearing from sight. Demetrius ran his fingers over one of the worn stones, filling what was left of the carvings. They were too shallow to see even uh, and even harder to feel. He glanced up, seeing Crennan step through the flowing mirror. They're nearly worn off. Ravion glanced over at his brother. What? The names and dates. They're nearly worn off. If we could find a date, we stand a chance at figuring out where we are. We're not going to find anything in this crypt. I say we see what's outside. Maybe there's a town nearby. Refusing to wait for objections, Gareth marched toward the decrepit stairway, uh, stairway leading up from the tomb. Crennan followed after Gareth, watching the bald man disappear from sight. He ducked at the top of the archway to keep from hitting his head on the low-hanging keystone. Maybe we should check the book. Ravion grabbed for the leather satchel, feeling his uh, lack of weight. Frantically pulling the flap open, he peered inside, confirming the book's absence. Fear crept inside him. How are we going to get home without direction, he wondered. It's missing. Pulling against the uh, seams, he searched for holes but found none. Sighing heavily, he accepted the fact it was gone. They were on their own. Subconsciously, he reached inside his vest, wrapping his hand around the wicked Chris tucked away from sight. He couldn't explain it, but holding the blade made him feel comfortable. It was as if his worries weren't so severe when he had the weapon in his hand. It's not here. I doubt we can get, uh, go back to find it. Best thing we can do is keep moving forward. Demetrix watched his brother's face. He was discouraged more than he'd ever shown in the past. There was something larger going on with him. He just didn't know what. Though if Ravion had a secret, there was a reason for him keeping it. He'd talk when time was right. Approaching, he patted him on the back. Let's go. Gareth's liable to start a war if we don't keep him out of trouble. Ravion chuckled at the thought, marching toward the arch. Gareth pushed against the rotten wooden door. The wood was soft and moist, leaving a spongy residue on his hands. Stepping out into the derelict graveyard, uh, Gareth looked around. The trees were tall and ominous, seeming to be eternally absent their leaves with the lack of foliage on the ground. The wicked branches stretched in all directions, showing dark contrast to the cloudy gray sky. It was nearly daylight, or it was clearly daylight, though the sun had trouble penetrating the rolling dark clouds. Instead, it filtered through, laying a, a soft glow over the frigid and un uninviting landscape. The weather held, gloom, held a gloomy cheer that only autumn could bring. Mm -hmm. The vegetation littering the ground was just as welcoming. Mm -hmm. Twisting around, or twisted around anything it could reach, strangling it with the thick, vicious barbs mm -hmm. of constricting mm -hmm. bands. He recalled the weeds in Eldarion, finding an uncomfortable similarity between the two. See a town? Krennic glanced around, clearly unimpressed by his findings. Does it look like I've found a town? Gareth searched the horizon in all directions. It was difficult to make out any structures past the sea of dead trees. No. Shaking his head at the half works little literal interpretation of sarcasm, he found himself missing Malachi. The man was always good for keeping the brute distracted with such simple concepts. Taking a deep breath, he continued to search. The soft glow above the clouds faded to an exceptionally or faded at an exceptional rate, turning the gray sky into a black, starless night. It happened so fast their eyes hadn't had a chance to adjust to the change. 
In the distance, a branch snapped, drawing their attention. Jumping into defensive positions, the group drew their weapons and ready to face whatever foes presented themselves. A low moan echoed through the dark, uh, dark barren forest, sending a cold shiver down their spines. Another followed, and another, each time moving closer. It was clear there was more than one, many more in fact, though it was hard to tell exactly how many. Do you hear that? Ravion asked, searching the total darkness for a source. He wasn't used to it his vision in this place such a change shouldn't have left him such a change shouldn't have left him blinded yet he couldn't see anything of course i hear it what the hell would be more suitable of course i hear it what the hell is it would be a more suitable question gareth scoffed can you see anything nope reminds me or it reminds me of the spell that drew used but that was a small area. I've never seen it on this scale before. Ravion kept his sword at the ready, ready to rip, uh, using the tip to rest his reach. I'm sorry, using the tip to test his reach. Demetrix held his newly forged sword in front of him, trying to keep his focus, trying to focus his vision in the darkness. I've been in this, I've been in this kind of dark before. We need to keep our eyes open for a mage. Crennan don't see anything. The moans increased, both in volume and uh, quantity. They sounded like they were right on top of them. Several bright sparks erupted, flaring up to reveal the head of a torch. Crennan looked out from the flame, spotting his friends. Crennan can see. My theory is shot. A torch won't burn through magical darkness. The flickering dim light surrounded them, revealing several humanoid creatures at the edge of their sight. Their features were sunken, leaving little more than rotting flesh clinging to bone. Some were whole, while others were missing limbs or had their stomachs torn open, revealing a gaping hole where their entrails had once been. The walking corpses varied from human to alfar. Even the occasional orc stood among them, uh, standing tall above the rest. Undead! Gareth swung his sword, cutting into the closest one. The blade cleaved deep, snapping bone. He jumped back, avoiding the deadly talons clawing at him. Breaking bone seems to be useless. Any ideas how we can kill them? Ravion swiped, aiming for the creature's neck. Dancing around to avoid the claw-like talons reaching at him, he cut off another, or cut off the arm of another. I've heard you can bash them or sever their heads, but I really don't know. I've never actually met one. Crennan swung his axe, biting deep into the midsection of one of the orcs. The thick blade tore a large hole in the leather-like skin. Soggy dirt fell from the wound, but the creature continued toward him. Spinning around, his second axe took off. Uh, took its head off. The creature's body fell to the forest floor, its head landing a few feet away. He watched it stagger from the blow, trying to pull itself together, though it didn't seem cognitive enough to pick itself up. I drop one. It's still moving, but not toward me. Crennan spun around, letting the blades extend. Um, shit. Demetrix spun around, letting his blades extend. The keen swords cut into the neck of the closest one. Keeping his momentum, he sliced into another, sending its head to the dirt. Like the others, they fell, uh, but continued to move. I've encountered undead before. Typically, taking their heads off will kill them, but these things just won't die. We need to get the hell out of here. Several flashes exploded in, exploded in the darkness around them. The blinding light left them staggered, unable to see anything in the yellow glow. Their eyes slowly adjusted to find a wall of flame on all sides. The undead retreated from the uh, blinding light, leaving the few that were too damaged to walk behind. They held their weapons tight, ready for what was to follow. Several humans at how far dropped from the outstretched trees, landing in the burning trap with them. They rapidly plunged thick spears into the loose heads of the undead, watching the bodies fall steel. Crennan offered thanks. He extended his hand toward one of the humans. Seeing the half-orc, they sprang into action. The newcomers surrounded him, their weapons pinned against his throat quicker than he could react. Ravion approached the group, keeping his hands visible. Whoa, whoa, I don't have, or don't know who you are, but if you kill him, you're going to have to kill the rest of us. And while we may not look like much, I assure you we've seen our fair share of battle. I urge you to ask yourself, is it really worth the loss of your men to, take such, to make such enemies before you've had a chance to meet them? You talk like an elf. One of the men stepped forward, lowering his hood to expose long pointed ears. Stepping toward Ravion, he sniffed. You talk like an elf. 
You smell like an elf, yet you don't look like one. What are you doing here? Ravi regarded the Alfar, unsure what an elf was. Maybe his people existed here. Maybe they were called elves in this land. My name is Ravion San Sanson. He recalled the death of his parents, st uh, stiffing his tongue a bit. Sorry, stifling his tongue a bit. I, my companions and I are from a distant land. Perhaps you could tell us where the nearest town is. Three humans and an orc traveling together. Distant land indeed. The Alfar approached the half-orc, daring him to attack. What's wrong with him? He's awful small. And what's the matter with his skin? He's a half-orc. Haven't you ever seen one before? Don't be absurd. Of course I've seen half-orcs. But this... This is no half-orc. Those unfortunate enough to be mutilated by the orcs rarely survive the birthing process. Those that do wish they hadn't. All orcs, whether half or full, are taken to Idenfall and en enrolled in the army. This thing, while it looks like an orc, clearly can't be. It's too small, even for a half-blood, and it's green skin. Ravion stood puzzled at the Alfar's statement. Orc skin was dependent on region, yet they were all about the same size, even a half-breed. I don't know how to respond to that, and judging by your tone, I'd say it best if he weren't an orc. Sounds like they aren't by reputation the most friendly of creatures. On the other hand, he looks like a smaller version of every orc I've ever met, though not by much. You silly human, orcs are gray, not green. I can't say I've ever... Uh, can't say I've even seen a sickly orc that turned green. Gareth shifted uncontrollably, tired of the questions. <clears throat> if orcs are gray, then I've got something wrong with my eye. Green orcs, gray orcs, does it really matter? Can you tell us where to get to the nearest town? We've come a long way, and I'm sure you have more important things to do than question us. Demetrius couldn't help but interject, using the opportunity to lift one of the Alfarian daggers. He quickly stuffed it beneath his bracer, uh, figuring they'd be unarmed in the near future. That I can agree with, although you won't be finding any city tonight. These woods are dangerous, particularly in the dark. You'll be coming with us. If you can convince Galleon of your authenticity, perhaps he may, perhaps you may be released. As for the question of your orc friend, he's to be restrained and stripped of weapons. If he resists, we'll kill him. If he attacks, we'll kill him. If he offer, offers anything other than complete obedience, we'll... Let me guess, you'll kill him. Demetrius smiled at the overly pompous Afar. It was no wonder they had. It was no wonder why so many disliked them. Exactly. The area carried a scent of cooked meat and spice. The crackle of fireplace echoed across the quiet room. Several men and women sat around, dressed in very, uh, dressed in a variety of clothing. Each one had a weapon nearby at the ready if needed. Demetrius sat. Demetrix sat in one of the crude wooden chairs, watching the man before him. He had a superior demeanor, but carried himself equal to the others around him. What was more surprising was the lack of armor. These people, people clearly had a hard life. They were dressed as peasants and farmers. One ran, or, uh, that rang one question in mind. Who were they fighting? <coughs> Let me see if I'm understanding this correctly. You pass through a magical portal into this land. You have no knowledge of the orc armies nor the Shadow Legion and their dark god. And to top it all off, your plan is to locate and defeat this god which you have no knowledge of. Am I missing anything? No, that pretty much sums it up. The Matrix glanced around, memorizing the layout. The human smirked. Forgive my skepticism, but it's not... Uh, is it possible you hit your head sometime in recent history? I mean, let's say I believe your story. That would explain your choice of companions and your attire. But there's the minor detail of magic. The term is not unknown to me. In fact, I may be one of the few in this room who have actually seen it and lived to tell about it. But come on, a magic portal? If such a thing exists, the Charliettes surely have... Or would say The Charliettes would have been all over it long before your merry band stumbled upon it. I don't know what a Charliette is, but I assure you every word I've spoken has been truth. I've no reason to lie at this moment. Although if magic is as rare as you claim, perhaps I can offer you enough insight to warrant a second thought. Demetrix clapped his hands together, pulling at the fibers uh, of the blue glow surrounding him. Watching them stretch and twist, the colors, uh, 
The colors of the separated strands shifted. A faint green light formed between his hands. Pulling them further apart, it grew brighter, forming, forming a single column. Several branches sprouted from the sides, entwining around each other. The room, grew, the room grew silent, all eyes locked on the spectacle. The stench of worry radi radiated throughout, growing stronger with each passion, each passing moment. That's enough. The Matrix continued pulling, feeling the thread strain against his fingertips. It was nearly ready to serve purpose. I said, that's enough. The man nodded to the guards against the wall. Two men rushed forward, bringing the pommels of their swords down at the base of Dimitrix's skull. He collapsed, the spell dissolving into the, uh, dissolving into the other from it, other that it had sprung. Bind his hands and lock him with the others. Bring the tall one out. They lifted his limp form and carried him from the room. A few moments later, they returned, escorting Ravion. Please take a seat. He gestured to the empty chair across from him. Ravion sat, looking around the room at the fear-strung faces watching him. I apologize for the manner in which your friend was returned. To prevent a similar outcome, I, uh, I ask up front, are you capable of using magic? Um, no. At least if I am, I'm unaware. I mean, I've done some minor healing here and there, but that's not so much magic as it is understanding of nature. Very well. I'll ask that you don't try any of that here. I warn you, if you deceive me, it's not my hand you must fear. The agents of shadow can sense magic, and it would it would lead them here. Uh, it would lead them here, and I doubt you and your friends are ready to combat an army all on your own. I only wish I was able to explain that to your friend before he tried to cast that spell. I wasn't aware he was able to use magic. Uh, I've never seen him do it, though I'm sure there's little more, little more than his pride was hurt. I hope so. It was not my intention to harm him. I simply could not allow him to continue. Anyway, on to business. My name is Galleon. I lead the 3rd Battalion of El Alon's Resistance. We may not seem like much, but I assure you this post has stood against all odds for over a hundred years. If I'm able to keep her that way, it'll be time well spent. Would you be so kind as to give me your name, and perhaps explain to me what you were doing when my men found you? Ravion studied his movements. His demeanor was relaxed yet ready to jump into the fray at a moment's notice. This man was loved by his men, at least the, at least the few in the room. While it was clear he, he while it was clear he hid certain points of interest, he was an honorable man by all accounts and could prove a trustworthy ally. My name is Ravion Sanson. I'd freely include my titles, but I fear their impact would be lost upon you. As for your question, my companions and I stumbled through a dark mirror that turned out to be some kind of a portal. We just arrived when or just arrived when we were attacked by those undead creatures. Your men showed themselves soon thereafter. Your friend friend gave a similar account, although he mentioned a book that led you to the portal. Do you by chance still have that book? Sadly I don't. I couldn't find it once we came through. I can't speak from knowledge, but if I had to guess, there's a similar book here. What I read in the other one suggested it was an account of what, an account of happenings in my land. It stands to reason there would be one for this land as well, but again, that's just a guess. I see. I don't know whether to wish you luck or recommend you stand down. Any search for such an artifact would be in vain. Most go their entire lives without ever setting their sights on a book. They've been outlawed for as long as I can remember. In fact, most wouldn't know what to do with one if they saw it. Learning to read isn't exactly a high priority when the price of being caught is death. Unfortunately, when one wants to fight, the ability to read and write can be an invaluable tool in the battle. It seems this land is much different than I'd originally thought. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about this world? <clears throat> you may. You mentioned armies and agents of shadow. With your resistance here, would I be wrong in assuming this land is under some kind of siege? You seem to me a man of perspective. Your assumptions have struck well. There are many myths, myths surrounding how things got as bad as they are. Though I can't say for certain things were ever any different. I don't know of any who, or I don't know of any who could. Even the eldest of elves would have difficulty recalling facts from that long ago. We've been at been at war against the shadows since before my birth. Truthfully, I don't know if there was ever a time we weren't at war. The Northlands are ruled by the shadow. They're rumored, they're rumored to be seven night kings. 
uh, one over each northern provenance. Each one has their own order of Charliette, not to mention the orcs that serve them. They revere some dark god claiming to have dominion over all of Irith. Uh, we in the south simply wish to live our lives away from their oppression, but they won't have it. Every year they move a bit further south, claiming more of our lands as their own. Aside from a few po uh, fr ah. aside from a few pockets of resistance, most of the realm has fallen in the uh, fallen into the shadow's control. I don't give a damn about some attention-craving god locked away in the heavens, if such a place exists. It's not the prospect of a god that threatens us on a daily basis. It's those who believe that hinder us so. The resistance has been fortunate enough to keep the shadow from gaining a foothold this far south, but it's a losing battle. If this outpost falls, we could very well lose the war altogether. Most of the cities are ruled by the Charliettes. As I said earlier, they have the ability to sense magic. No one knows how many Charliettes there are, but one thing one thing you should always remember if you encounter one, they're never alone. In this region, all the orcs come from Idenfall. They're a vicious lot bred for war. They take humor in the torment of those weaker than themselves, and and have the biggest obstacle we face or and have been the biggest obstacle we face as we're outnumbered nearly a thousand to one. <coughs> what can you tell me about this Elalon you mentioned? Ravion asked. Elalon's one of the wisest elves I've known. She single-handedly stood against the armies of Shadow and freed the forest city of Adriel from the Shadow's hold. Once word of her deeds circulated, every man, woman, and child willing to stand against the Shadow flocked to her aid. It was then the, fir the third era was born. So you're saying... The sound of horns echoed all around, interrupting him. The men and women lounging about the room jumped up, grabbing their weapons as quickly as possible. Ravion, I appreciate you speaking with me. I would like to continue this, but it seems we've run out of time. I would appreciate if you would accompany my men back to your friends and await my word. Should you require weapons, they're being kept in the room straight across from you. Galalon uh, drew a long serrated sword. Uh, a pick-like spike protruded from protruded from the spine near the tip, leaving a sharpened edge uh, curved like that of an axe. Giving the command, he rushed from the room, joining his men. Ravion made his way to the holding room, ignoring the two men behind him. Busting through the doors, he spotted Gareth standing near the far wall, staring out the smoked window. One of the panes was busted out, allowing minimal sight into the cloaking night. Looking around, he noticed Demetrix lying unconscious on the cloth-covered bench against the far wall. He heard the door latch behind him, clicking into place. Are you able to make out any details? Mere fig figures in the distance. I can see a glow of several torches. Hard to say how many. Uh, hard to say how many are around them. Most likely orcs. I got a bit of history from the commander. They seem. Or seems they've been in a state of war their entire lives. We should be right at home then, Gareth laughed. Ravion walked over to his brother, giving him a, a light shake. I've got a feeling this will be unlike anything we've ever faced. Demetrix shot up, ripping the stolen dagger from its hiding spot. It's a good way to get stabbed. I trust your skill. You would have confirmed your target before striking. Good job concealing the blade, by the way. Sounds like marching? Why does it sound like marching? Demetrix glanced around the room, regaining his bearing. We're under attack. We need to get out of here. This isn't our fight. Gareth broke another section of glass, hoping it would allow a clearer view. Yep, definitely orcs. Though they're either too... So, yep, definitely orcs, though they're either too close... As... as uh, they're either too close... As in, within Archer's range, or they're larger than the ones we're used to. Ravion's nose wrinkled at the statement. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. You forgot the harder they hit, Gareth chuckled. Agreed. Any ideas where they stashed Krennan? Demetrix stood and approached the door. Pulling at the handle, He, the door wouldn't budge. Well, no surprise here, they've locked us in. The dull pitch of horns echoed off the towering trees. Uh, towering trees, this is a new section by the way. The dull pitch of horns echoed off the towering trees and ruined buildings. 
The flicker of torches blazed in the unnatural darkness, shyly illuminating the, their bearers. If it hadn't been for the number, they wouldn't have had any effect at all. Resurrect stood from the side... Re Resurrect looked from side to side, inspecting the formation of orcs awaiting his command. Had they not been bred, for, uh, bred to fear his kind, they would impose a mighty fear of their own. It wasn't so much the thick armor covering them or the jagged weapons that made them frightening. It was the mutilated flesh beneath that did the trick. Scarred from a lifetime of victories, each one was branded or cut as a way to identify status among the brutes. Their charcoal gray skin served as a resume that would travel with them regardless of their destination. The sound of approaching footsteps roused him. One of the Charliettes stepped toward the dark horseman and lowered his hood, revealing a pale white skin beneath. Dark One, we've confirmed it's a, res it's a resistance stronghold. The first, ah, first squadron has engaged them. The cowards have fallen back into their barricades. Resurrect stared down at the m intimidated man, taking in the stench of his cowardice. It was a smell unlike any other, but it told him more than enough about the young Charliette. Good. Send the entire 4th Brigade as reinforcement. I need, need them to... Do I need them distracted while I take what I came for. As you wish, my lord. He threw his hood overhead and, and turned uh, to disappear back into the darkness. New section. Demetrix stepped back, ready in the, ready in the dagger to strike fast and hard if needed. The door clicked and opened wide, revealing Galleon. We can't hold them off any longer. If you're going to leave here, you're going to leave now. The human commander stepped aside and opened the door across the hall. All of your belongings are in here. Get what you need. I'll lead you to your friend. They rushed into the room, locating their effects. Quickly securing them, they followed after Galleon, hearing the sounds of battle closer than, ever, back, closer than ever. The corridors wrapped around, forming a maze in the large keep. They passed through a narrow stairwell lined with stone and mortar. The bottom was sealed in a reinforced wooden door. Several brass keys jingled from a large ring in Galleon's hand. He fumbled through them, selecting the correct one. Pressing it into the lock, he turned. The door clicked and sprang open. The dank smell of mildew and stagnant air assaulted them, stepping into the damp dungeon floor. Uh, the chill of the underground soaked into their bones, reminding them of the long-forgotten pains. Your friend is this way, gaily and gestured toward the iron cells lining the stone wall. Following their guide, they rounded the corner and spotted Krennan shackled in the center of one of the small cells. He hung limp, his arms stretched overhead by two thick chains securing him to the upper runs of the cage. He was stripped of everything save his breeches. They were held in place only by his muscular hips. He bore several lashes across his back and shoulders, each one coated in layers of dried blood. His bare feet were outstretched, and the tips of his toes narrowly touching the cold stone floor, due only, er, due only in his collapsed state. Gareth rushed toward the cell, pulling at the door. Turning toward Galleon, he found his anger, uh, found the anger inside him, begging to be unleashed. Open it. The human fumbled with the key, finding the correct one. Unlocking the cell, he stepped inside, or he stepped aside, pulling the door with him. Krennan peeked through his heavy, swollen lids, spotting his brothers. He tried to find, or tried to pull himself upright, but the chain sapped him of strength. He couldn't lift his head, let alone his entire body. Ravion stepped into the cell and grabbed the shackles, holding, uh, holding his wrist. Do you have a key for these? Galeon reached into his pouch and pulled out a small round tube with several barbs protruding from the end. Here you are. Tossing the key to Ravion, he turned and made for a large chest on the far wall. Gareth and Demetrix pulled the exhausted half-orc up, taking the weight off his chains. Ravion twisted the strange key, releasing the shackles. Helping him to the bench, they placed him against the wall to regain some of his strength. Galeon returned, holding a leather bag over his shoulder. Here are his things. I apologize for the inconvenience and condition in which he's being returned to you. While I don't condone, condone the actions of my men in this regard, you have to understand the fear my people have of orcs is not misplaced. I couldn't risk have, having him loose inside the keep. Gareth jumped up, stopping inches from the man's face. I don't give a damn about the fear of you or your people. You've mistreated my friend. I'll not stand for it. I understand your discord, I'm, and I'm truly sorry for the afflictions he suffered under my command. 
I did not give the order uh, order to have him beaten. I simply wished him rest restrained and questioned. Some of my men get a little carried away at times. He held out the bag, refusing to back down from the enraged bald man. Ravion stood, accepting the bundle. Come on, Gareth. There's no sense in making another enemy when the odds are already stacked so heavily against us. Gareth held a moment longer, staring his rage deep into the unyielding commander. Knowing his true implications were received, he turned, directing his attention to, the weak, to his weakened friend. I cannot, I cannot undo what has been done, but I am man enough to admit when someone has been wronged. I offer payment for the blood that's been lost. Galian drew his serrated sword, bringing it to rest in front of him. It's a poor comparison, but I hope this will, this will help to forgive the wrongs that were done here. I claim this blade from the first orc commander I ever defeated. I've carried it into every battle since. It served me well, and now I wish it to serve you. He spun the serrated blade around, letting the pick slide into its pocket of the sheath. Pulling the sheath from his belt, he handed the sword to Ravion. If you'll excuse me, I need to return to my men for our final stand. You'll find a wooden door under the bed of the last cell. It'll take you into the forest north of here. I wish I could give you more assistance in your quest. But it seems this is where our paths end. Good luck on your task. May Alalon's grace guide your way. And that is the end of that chapter. So we will get off of here as I have other stuff to do, like writing and the like, because stuff. So I will return next week and we'll continue with chapter 14. So you guys have a good evening and thanks for watching.